There once lived a young woman who had no boundaries on what she practiced. And because of this, she paid the ultimate price, her life. Y'all ever heard of that story? If you're following me on TikTok, and if you are not, I highly recommend that you go ahead and do so now. The link is in my description down below. We have touched on this white woman who thought it would be a great idea to practice voodoo to try to hex her African-American girlfriend. This is a good one. This is how you F around and find out. Get your popcorn. Hi, my name is Noah. I'm a spooky spiritualist. And on my channel, we talk about death, spiritual reparations, haunted people, places, and things, and how you can fuck around and find out if you are not following me or subscribe to this channel. I highly recommend you do so. So before we even get into the story of Kaylin and Reston, I come from TikTok and a lot of you guys wanted a podcast and a YouTube channel with longer form content. So here we are. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, make sure you're commenting, sharing, and all that good stuff. This story is really a tragic one. I talk a lot on my TikTok channel about how not to fuck around and find out. And unfortunately, this young woman did because she just would not listen. And sometimes us spiritualists who are African-American tell you guys that we gatekeep not because we want this secret society where nobody else can get in which we do okay but it's for your own good trust me on this one Kaylin ann reston was born november 29 2000 in virginia beach virginia by all accounts she was a normal little girl had a normal childhood grew up in a two-parent house and was a pretty normal person in society she even volunteered to make blankets for the houseless. She was active in her community and everyone loved Caitlin. Caitlin did identify as Wiccan um, and was into the occult, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. That's your practice, that's your belief, and that lines up with your, you know, culture. Caitlin had just had a baby girl. Her name was Aaliyah. She was five months old at the time of her death. So she was a brand new first time mom and she was in a relationship with an African-American woman. Sometime in March of 2020, Caitlin and her girlfriend broke up. Whatever the reason may be, Caitlin felt like she had to get her lick back for something. So instead of doing what she normally does, which is Wiccan pagan practices, she decided that she was going to use voodoo. Now, for people that don't know what voodoo is, it is a closed practice, it's a closed religion, and it relies on spirits of African descent. Caitlin was a part of a lot of occult groups on Facebook, and she would get guidance for different spells she was doing. She would share some of the spells that she was doing. And back in April of 2020, she started to share photos in this group and on Twitter and they were a little troublesome to some of the practitioners that was in this group, some of the black practitioners in specific. She shared a picture of a poppet or otherwise known as a voodoo doll. Now this was troublesome because the voodoo doll itself looked like it had like little locks attached to it. And her African-American girlfriend, which I'm hoping I could find a picture had locks and she was very open about the fact that she was trying to hex her ex-girlfriend who is of african descent do y'all see where i'm going with this <laughs> this was not a good idea so of course the other members of the group that knew better white and black told her this is not your lane you need to stay in your lane because this can get very very dangerous so instead of taking the advice and calling the whole thing off, Caitlin then went to Twitter to share another picture of her poppet doll and put this quote. 
let people live and have their own religion. If someone is into something different, accept that. Stop saying, no, you come from God. I'm wicked and I always will be, so shut the F up and let me be. This was the response to people trying to help her and tell her to leave things alone that don't belong to you. And so she continued to do her hex. Now, remember, this photo that she shared on Twitter, in this Facebook group, all of this was March 29th, 2020. I know a lot of us have preconceptions, okay? We have notions about what pop it or voodoo dolls really are, but they're very, very powerful and they're usually used for luck unless you're ready to fuck around and find out what else they could be used for. So there was some concern there because we didn't know. And we, I was following this story live. Okay. People didn't know if the hair on the poppet was that of her ex-girlfriends. You need some type of DNA, whether that be um, semen, sweat, saliva, hair, nails, whatever, skins, a, a scab. You can use anything that you want your tar- from your target. So it was a little concerning when we saw that this pop, it had dreadlocks. Because man, what you think you're doing? This was such a dangerous, bad idea. And some of her friends, it seemed like they were divided. A lot of her counterparts that looked just like her were defending these actions and telling people to shut up, mind their business. They were very, very rude in saying that they didn't want the no other opinion. She didn't need anybody's opinion when she absolutely did. All of them were giving baby witch. They were giving pandemic witches, which she could have been a witch before this, but a seasoned witch knows to stay in her lane and not to do things like this. That closed practices are closed for a certain reason, not just because the members of that said closed practice want to be mean. Sometimes when you're a part of a closed practice, it's because if you dig too much into that closed practice and you are not initiated, you will get tapped on the ass. And Caitlin was about to, she was about to experience that. It is unclear how much and how deep this woman went into the practice of voodoo. Okay. We don't know. There's not enough evidence online. And I tried to join this group just so that I could be a little bit nosier and my, my membership is still pending. Okay. But either way, on April 17th, she posted in this group and the group on Facebook is called Witch Way. Okay. She posted, I seen Papa Legba today and I'm scared. And then commented underneath her own post and said, no stuff. All right. So Let's get into who Papa Legba is, okay? Because American Horror Story Coven has us believing that Papa Legba was just this scary, skeleton-looking man. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Papa Legba is usually depicted as an old, wise man. He is the keeper of the crossroads. We consider Papa Legba the keeper of the crossroads because he acts as the messenger between this realm and that realm, between humans and the Loa and the Orishas and all that good stuff. So he is not as scary as people depict him to be. He comes with warm, old grandpa spirit. He usually comes to you as a older guy that may have an injury, maybe with a crutch, maybe with a cane, with a brim straw hat, with a pipe. He also likes dogs. He usually is seen with two dogs. They're very, very sacred to him. And in Santeria, he has this synchronized energy to St. Peter, St. Lazarus, and St. Anthony. Papa Legba is also a trickster spirit. Like, he makes you think your your life is upside down and just be like, oh, psych, there's a lesson in this. He's not what TV has depicted him to be. So when Caitlin made this post about seeing Papa Legba and being scared, 
us black spiritualists that know who Hapalegba is and what he embodies were a little troubled because we didn't think that was Papalegba. Okay. Papalegba may have shown himself, but there's another spirit that us practitioners, I am not initiated. I repeat, I am not initiated yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no, let me be serious. I'm not initiated, but since I am a spiritualist and I am black and I come from African descent, it is my responsibility to know things about these spirits, deities, different things like that. So whenever we heard that she's seen Papa Legba, uh-uh, that was not Papa Legba, that was Baron. Which one? We don't know. <laughs> because Baron Samadhi, he is what I consider a hothead. Baron Samadhi is the keeper of death. He is what's considered like the Grim Reaper in the Loa. He deals with everything regarding death, healing, and all that good stuff. We talked about this on my TikTok page whenever we had our American Horror Story Coven series, how they mix Papa Legba and Baron together. Because Baron, like I said a little bit earlier, can be known as a hothead in the Loire because he don't play no games. He, he's not for play play. I actually know someone who has had many encounters because these are spirits. So they can come to you in the flesh. And that person told me it was the most scariest but warmest like interaction that she had ever had but she also is initiated into voodoo okay so there's levels to this now i said we don't know which baron showed up because these spirits have many different in like carnations of them they can be reincarnated into different spirits but the same in one if that makes sense so for instance baron we have baron samadhi we have Baron La Cru. We have Baron La Criminal. We have so many different personalities, if you will, to these spirits. So I don't know if she got Sam Audi or La Cru or which one she got, but whichever one came to her in the flesh meant business and was offended. So Caitlin made this post in the Witch Way group on April 17th, 2020. They didn't hear anything else from Caitlin and would not ever hear anything else. Two days later, Caitlin Ann Rustin was found drowned in her bathtub. It was the unfortunate demise that we were all very, very fearful of. We did not want this for this woman. Voodoo is more about healing. It is light. It is all things good. Westerners have made voodoo evil, but I can honestly say the spiritual reparations that Caitlin Reston experienced, she did bring on herself. Let's just look at the facts here. Caitlin was white and she was relying on black spirits. This is why we tell y'all some things aren't for everyone, okay? Because if she really thought Papa Legba or Beron was going to help someone that looked like her, when he, they help the people of Haiti, okay, defeat those same types of people in the Haitian revolution, then she was sadly mistaken. It doesn't work like that, okay? And then to add the cherry on top and what was really offensive, is that for one, Papa Legba and Baron probably sent his children to warn her to not do this. Sent their kids to be like, hey, you gotta let girl know this is not what she wants. And she was disrespectful in telling them to basically fuck off. You can't do those type of things, okay? And then the extra, extra cherry was that her target was black. These spirits don't play. 
it doesn't matter if her girlfriend practice or not she is of african descent and so are these spirits okay so it's just it's an unfortunate story it is a learning experience for other practitioners that want to practice closed practices it's not just voodoo it's not just hoodoo it's not just ifa it's not just santeria it's all of them we need to mind our religions practices and respect one another because now there's a little girl out there that's going to grow up without a mother her baby was five months old whenever she passed away no drugs have been reported in this girl's system. This was not like, oh, she may have done drugs and maybe fell asleep in the tub. That is not what this is. This was a drowning. And it was under suspicious circumstances. It's just really unfortunate. After her death, all of her tweets, Facebook posts were brought out into the light because we literally were in the house and in the house bored. This was during the pandemic, y'all. So all of her tweets, all of her social media posts, they were all posted. And a practitioner came forward and did a reading. And I'm assuming that this practitioner is initiated because you cannot speak to spirits like this if you're not initiated, if that makes sense. But the message goes, I just want to take a moment to say RIP cat. I just did a reading on her and I asked Papa Legba, was that him? And he said, no, nah, it was Veron, shaking my head. Y'all have to be careful what y'all tap into. Heavy on the be careful what y'all tap into. Seriously, all magic ain't for everybody. All practices is not for everybody. If Caitlin Reston was not the prime example of that, then I don't know what will be. The, like I said, these are spirits. These are spirits. And spirits are very, very powerful. This is not a deity. This is not folklore, so to speak. But this is this is real. So if you don't want to fuck around and find out, mind your practices, be good and do good, and listen to people that have the knowledge to tell you to stop. I don't know what Caitlin did during her rituals, but whatever it was, it literally pissed off a spirit. And this is the type of spiritual reparation that I don't wish any of y'all to experience. All right. So just do good, be good, please. And if you like this type of content, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment down below what you would like me to cover next. I have an arsenal of different content that I would like to release on here that is longer form. Like I said, I came from TikTok. And I want to make longer form content for y'all, but y'all got to let me know something. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.